All right, metalheads, this is DJ Rem from Metalhead Radio, and I have Wally from the band Allele. How's it going, man? All right, good. What's happening, man? Just uh, was sitting jamming your tunes last night, getting ready, preparing for the interview, and was uh, actually listened from the, to the album from beginning to end, so that was pretty cool. Sweet. I'm glad you could make it from front to back. Got to gotta give, it, give it a chance, you know? Absolutely. So what was the show you guys played last night? Uh, we were at uh, Hartford, Connecticut, at, uh, up on the rocks. Uh, cool place. Man. We haven't been back there in uh, years. It was, it was really cool to be back there last night. Uh, good time. Really good time. Yeah, I was, I was just looking. I see you guys just played uh, a show close to me in Michigan. Uh, yeah, in Owasso. Yep. Uh, how, uh, how close is that to you guys? I don't know. I'm close to Kalamazoo, so however far that is. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> well, that makes two of us. <laughs> Obviously, it was too far for you to drive to. Oh, snap. Ouch. <laughs> just, that's the idea, man. Uh, I know. It's all uh, good, dude. Yeah, it was. It was cool. I've never been there. Uh, usually, we play at Flint when we come to Michigan. Uh, but that didn't work out and um, put this show together in Owasso, really small town and uh, man, it was it was one of the most fun shows of the tour was there Very cool, very cool, yeah, Flint yeah, yeah Flint's about two hours from me Okay, yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is like it's about 30 minutes uh, west of Flint Alright, so you're about an hour and a half from me then yeah, I mean, it was, it was such a tiny town. I mean, it, we, I think we drove through it in, like, 33 seconds. But, uh, man, it was like everybody there was just, um, I don't know, it was like they'd never, like, had a, a rock show come through the town. It was it was amazing. Definitely a lot of fun. That's cool. Okay, so where's this, where's this current tour you're on take you next? Uh, next, we're going to, we have three Connecticut dates, which is crazy how, they're not even that far apart, but um, I guess people don't really like driving far here or something. I don't know, but it's, it's cool. Connecticut's gorgeous, man, so um, it's beautiful out here, so we have no problem hanging out here for three days. We're going to uh, Brookfield, Connecticut tonight, um, and then we were supposed to head up to Albany at Bogies for you know big metal show, but we're not going to be able to make that show just because of some logistics, but uh, then we head down to uh, the Carolinas. And then we wrap the tour back up in Florida. So you guys are from Florida then? Yep. The infamous Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> Almost just about everybody, right? Well, it's definitely warmer there than it is here, let me tell you. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's so nice up here. I mean, I don't know how we lucked out. It's like we've been in Minnesota, North Dakota, you know, everywhere so far on the tour, and you know, we ran into, you know, just a ton of snow in Omaha for like an hour. You know, and then we, uh, once we roll into Connecticut, we just missed that eight days where the power was all out from the snowstorm that hit them out of nowhere. Um, so, um, I mean, we, we had like just missed like all the really bad weather. But, you know, we've lucked out, man. It's just been so nice. So nice. Like everywhere we went. Cool. So, okay, let's talk about the album. Where, where'd you guys record this current album at? Um, man, you got time? Yeah, so we, the, the thing was so chopped up. I've never done a record so chopped up before. Kelly's never done one that's chopped up. We did the drums and bass at A1A Studios in um, Jacksonville Beach. We just wanted to do the record at home this time. Um, with uh, Paul Lipinski, and he's just, he's done a ton of people, just amazing guys, and uh, we were really happy, you know, with, uh, we did the drums and the bass at that studio, and um, you couldn't get a better sound, and we were really stoked with it, so we uh, ran out of money, so we had to come up with other options of, you know, doing it, because we did our, the record ourselves this time, um, we didn't really want any help doing it, so we um, went to a different studio, Turnaround, studio um a friend of ours uh steve miller and uh we did guitars there and then i flew out and did the vocals um at dexter dog studios out there with uh, pete Terrell, the bass player with trap um and then we uh wrapped it up in our band room with kelly's lead guitars 
and uh, you know just went in and had uh, back to politics but had a mix and master so it worked out it was killer sorry that alarm went off <laughs> it's, it's all good man <laughs> that was for you this morning the alarm went off <laughs> like, hey somebody's calling me what um okay so that so that's all the the album cover now I really like the cover art where did how did that come to be that is our friend Grant Simmons. Uh, he's in a band, Pleasure Burn. He's uh, he lives out, you know, uh, Lisa Viejo, and we we had messed with like different kinds of artwork, and the artwork on the last album was really cool. And we wanted something that was that was really cool, really cool, you know, um, and different. And uh, he started messing, you know, with with the name and and just kind of developed the logo. And um, you know, we're really into the. Uh, you know, we're just really into this uh, universe thing. And, you know, he takes the logo and, and we together, like, turn it into kind of what's a Stargate, you know what I mean, if you will? Right, yep. Um, so, like, on the back of the album, how you see it kind of, you know, basically warping itself, you know, just somewhere random and it's, like, popping up out of the ocean, you know what I mean? Right. Um, and then, the you know, the, the front of the album, it's, it's completely, you know, out of the water. So that's it's like the concept for it. You know, the whole idea of uh, just being dropped off on the planet a long time ago kind of thing. So uh, that's just that's where the artwork went. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate you sharing that with me. I always, I'm always very interested in how um, bands come up with their artwork. You know. Yeah, you know, last like the last album, my, my wife was a biology teacher, so, you know, in alleles, and we got on the whole thing, and that's where the eye came from. And, you know, then the, you know, the company came up and did the artwork, and... We just we want it to be something significant or meaningful every time you do it, and you know we just don't want something random that that we drew while somebody was on the toilet or somebody was like you know feeling weird and just drew something. So um, you know it's like we really get into that whole thing. Everybody's a band, you know, kind of has the same beliefs when it comes to you know what we're doing here, kind of thing. You know, so uh, and how we came to be here, and that's just where the uh, star work came from, which is really cool. That's nice, because I tell you what, when I see a band's cover and it's a picture of the band, I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh, God. You know, we didn't even want to put a picture of ourselves in the album so bad that where did we put it? We put it underneath the CD where no one can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he can't even see me on it. I'm completely blocked by the little, little eyelet. You know what I mean? Right. So, uh, you know, when people, like, you know, have a sign of CDs, it's like, it's really it's I kind of actually like that you can't even face so uh it's great for me we didn't even want to put the picture in there but it was like oh you gotta have a picture there. you gotta have something we gotta have pictures of everybody and spread them out in the you know the fold I'm like there's no way we're putting pictures of ourselves spread out through the fold it's like come on you know whatever so we did it to suffice and uh you can see where we put it so it's kind of funny so now you know that's why the picture's where it's at that's cool so how did you guys originally form the band? How did you guys all get together? Well, I uh, I was in a really completely different band and you know for a couple of years. And then um, in 2002, I uh, just wanted to switch gears and, and do more, you know, just more like, I don't know, just different music. So I, uh, you know, kind of left all my band members and um, Lane Maverick, you know, and, uh, so a friend had introduced me to him. And uh, we started playing, and, you know, I liked the drop tuning, and, you know, I like all the riffage, and, you know, it was, like, great. So I got together with him, and, you know, we found some other guys, and we started jamming, just like every band, uh, you know, even though people really hate it, but, you know, you, you have to evolve and do things. You know, we went through a few band members, and and then, um, you know, in, in late 04, you know, we, we had known Kelly, and, you know, Lane and I was like, man, we really... I would really, I really pushed, I really wanted two guitar players in the band. I just, I'm, I do not, I don't know, I love two guitar players in a band, um, especially when you're live. So uh, we started messing around with it and didn't really find anybody we, we liked because we wanted a, a lead guy, somebody who was different, you know what I mean? So uh, we were, I don't know where we were, some like little local venue in Jacksonville and Kelly was hanging out and um, we ended up playing a few days later and you know, real like crap all the time and uh, just for fun. And, uh, you know, he was really into the band and I was just like, hey, dude, why don't you just play a song with us? And then he, uh, he had came and like 
played and then he was at my house like a few days after that and I was like building a deck in my yard and and uh, he was on the phone and Scooter was like dude where the hell are you blah 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 where the heck aren't you aren't you at practice and he had pretty much quit like right there <laughs> <laughs> he's just like I'm not coming back to practice and you know you can hear you can hear yelling through the phone <laughs> and uh, you know that's where we picked up Kelly that day and uh you know, and then we, um, you know, hooked up with Tim, you know, our bass player, right after that, and uh, the rest is his story. That's cool. That's cool. Well, I like the stories. I like the stories. Yeah, we have a lot. What um? So, how did you guys pick the name for the man? Uh, again, wife was a biology teacher. Right. And so, uh, you know, we're looking through names, and you know, it's like that's by jumping off a building to, you know, like. I don't know, just the, the most ridiculous names you can come up with for a band. We came up with a lot of really cool ones, but we didn't want something that sounded metal or pop or anything. We wanted something that somebody had to uh, think about and learn how to say. And so uh, she had popped that name out. And, dude, it took me like two days to go allele. Like, I was like, allele, allele, you know? But uh, that that really kind of was one of the reasons I really liked it. You know, make people think about something. So right. So you telling me I said it right the first time? Sweet. Said it right the first time, man. You know, a lot of radio they call it a lele, a layu, a, a leli. You did really good. You know, sometimes but, things are as simple as they seem. It just, you know, it is what it looks like. Yeah, it's just like when you do anything. You know, sometimes you just don't have to overthink it. It's right. right there in front of you. Cool. I, I appreciate it. So I also, well, before I forget, I want to, um, I want to thank, uh, you know, we got to thank Shauna for. Uh, oh, we love Shauna. Shauna right. O'Donnell in the house. That's yep. Great. She, uh, you know, I'm gonna tell you something if I, if I may. Yeah, please. Uh, you know, we are on a record label that is not doing anything for us. We have uh, unfortunately fallen into the. We've fallen into that thing that has been happening to a lot of bands. Right. And we never wanted it to happen to us, and it did. Um, we've had absolutely zero um, anything to do with our band being put out in media or on radio. It was nothing. We've had zero zilch. zilch. And uh, we really, Sean is the, the first person on her own, um, friends with our drummer, Nate, um, from a while back, and, She's really gone out of her way. We're not her client. We're not anything to her, you know? Right, yep. She just, she listened to the record. And she's like, I love your record. And she's just been the biggest help. I mean, the biggest help. You know, it's like, you know, just to help with getting in touch with you and, and, and just things that she has, she has put more print on our band than, than, our, than anyone else has. And she's been amazing, and we really appreciate her for it. Yeah, she's, I will totally agree. She is awesome. She she is always throwing new bands toward my way and you know like with you guys she's like and she kind of already has a sense for what kind of music i like and she just she'll just send me she'll send me a band say hey go check these guys out see what you think she hasn't sent me anybody i don't like that's awesome yeah she she's educated for sure <laughs> you know she definitely thinks before she speaks you know and then that obviously gets you a long way, and that's why she's so successful. She's an amazing person, and we're really indebted to her for the help that she's done just because she simply likes her music. I don't, go figure. People that like your music spreading the word. Amazing, hey? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like, like the olden days when people used to just share tapes. Dude, I just, you know, I used to do, man, I mean, I used to have the little cassette tapes, and, you know, you, you used to sit there and record like your own little things like putting like you know toilet paper up in the little dump stops and between songs like man there's so much cool stuff back in the day and you know i embrace technology i'm a tech freak in, in every way but it's definitely destroyed not ruined it's definitely destroyed a lot of the rock music industry man but you know that's why we still tour we still try and uh you know command you know demand you know the the personal part of it so it's all right. Everything goes through a cycle, you know. Yep, exactly. What um, so where can we'll give you some plug time here? Where can people buy the album if they want a physical copy of it? You know, that's a that's a question that I ask our record label, and your guess would be as good as mine. So, that's not good. 
Yeah, it's not good. Um, that I think there were ten records put in our hometown on opening week, and they haven't restocked them since then. No matter how many people ask for a record anywhere, no one has it, and no one has restocked our record if they did have them. That's that's not good. Can, no. Where can they buy it online? Can they buy it? Can they do they digital can buy download? It everywhere online, yeah. I mean, Amazon to iTunes to. Um, you know, uh, Best Buy, Barnes and Noble. You know, like anything, anywhere. I mean, it, I mean, even I think on CMT, for God's sakes. You know, like .dot com has our album for sale. Um, you can buy it anywhere online. So I have no idea, and I know this is probably you know out of the box for a musician to say about their album. Um, but I don't know if anyone will receive it if they order it, man. So it's it's we're in a really bad predicament as far as record sales and. And people getting our record, people have the most success getting our record uh, apparently at our shows. Right, okay, so um, they go to your show. So go to their show. You can yeah, buy the record at right, the show. They go to your show. Um, I, I'm sure you have lots of merchandise you sell at the show too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just I don't want to send people to a store and then like not find our record. You know, they're they're supposed to be in FYEs, so I would try those first. Okay. You know, Best Buy can order them in the store if they're out. You know, but. Uh, but mainly the show. That's that's where it's and it's cheaper. It's like half the price of the show. You know, CDs are like you know not getting any cheaper for some reason. Oh my God, no! They're like fifteen, sixteen bucks at that Fy whatever that place. Ours FYE. is seventeen ninety eight at an Fye. Wow. Yeah, ten dollars at a show. Hmm. Yeah. So we we covered. I think we covered a big market. You know, on this run, we've been like I said, pretty much everywhere except the West Coast. So we've gotten rid of the. CDs in school. Right. People are enjoying it, which is humbling and awesome. Excellent. Plus, if they buy it at your show, they're not paying a middleman. So, Dude, yeah, there's no middleman, and like I said, you're saving so much money. It's insane how much it costs in a store. But I personally went and bought it. You know, like I love buying CDs in stores. Right. Sometimes yeah. I'm like, ow, get sucker punched in the face by a price tag. But you know, it does take a lot to put it in the store. You know. Uh, there's just so much involved in putting in a store. It, it does get expensive, but, you know, I still do it, and it's great to see people. Uh, you know, it's crazy. It's like the last record did great, but I think I see more of a demand for people wanting a physical hard copy now, and I'm starting to notice people are, are kind of getting sick and tired of, like, online, you know, WAV files and MP3 files. Right. And uh, It's cool because I'm starting to see people really get back into wanting to buy a record in the store, you know? Yeah, I was just in the local record shop last week digging through, trying to see what I could find that I didn't have or had never heard of. Yeah, I hope that continues, man, because that's, that's there's a lot going on with, with uh, that not happening, you know, with bands. And it's like back in the day, man, like Korn would do a million records in a week and Five Finger Death Punch just did like 90 in a week, you know, but just like a few years ago, those numbers were just gigantic. It's like just shrinking and shrinking, you know, but... Right. Um, I don't know. I personally am optimistic, and I, I see people really starting to get back into it. Yeah, and vinyl seems to be coming back pretty huge too. So. Yeah, we were supposed to do that with our record, and that didn't happen. Which sucks. I would love to do that. That'd be cool. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have it done just to do it. You could just buy some vinyl and scratch it in. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do it just to do it, man. Cause that, that would be killer. Cause we have family, you know, sub record players. So that'd be cool. Right. Yep. So what were your uh, what what were your influences growing up and kind of got you into just music in general? Uh, it would make no sense, but if you want me to answer that question, I will. Yeah, um, yeah. Do- doesn't have to make sense, man. Yeah, I mean, my uh, people are gonna laugh at me, but uh, I don't care. I don't lie. So um, you know, my mom was a DJ, amazing vocalist, insanely powerful vocalist, and you know, she did a lot of like you know singing DJ stuff and. Uh, man, I would grow up listening to, to Tina Turner and Lionel Richie, um, you know, Journey and just, you know, all those bands in, in the 80s. And, um, you know, just I liked anything. I, I didn't care, like, if it was on a radio or if it was a tape somebody had. Like, anything I liked, I just liked. I, I never went with anything as a trend, but I just always appreciated just anything that was really good, genuine music. Um you know, it's, I don't have any particular kind of, uh, you know, genre that influenced anything that I've ever done. You know, from, like I said, man, from like uh, metal to, you know, 
Lionel Richie, dude. It's like everything. Because, you know, everything's relative to one another when it comes to music. Um, so, you know, just because you don't like one genre, I mean, it that doesn't matter. It's, it's Everything's relative, and everything just uh, spins off of each other. So um, I've grown up loving everything. And, uh, you know, it's like, for me, when, uh, you know, the, the early 90s started spinning around and you saw the shift in music, like, that's probably grabbed me the most, you know what I mean? Like, the last, you know, 10, you know, 12 years, um, it's definitely the biggest musical influence of, you know, everything. And I, you know, I remember the first time I heard a Sepultura record, and I was like, holy, can't say on radio, you know? Right, yeah. Um, and everything just really started busting open from there. And I just take it all in, man. I mean, everything. Well, yeah, and I, I really appreciate that, because I'm the same way. I... I get real tired of people being stuck in those genre ruts where, well, I only listen to this kind of music, really? Why would you limit yourself, you know? Yeah, why, dude? I mean, there's so much, there's so much, I mean, yeah, there's a bunch of junk, you know what I mean? But And, and it's kind of mean sometimes, and people go, no, it's not, but I really think it's mean sometimes to call somebody else's art junk, I really do, but, I mean, you run into a lot of, let's just call it poorly produced material you know right um but you know people have a passion for it yeah i know sometimes people are like well just because you want to sing doesn't mean that you should sing <laughs> you know but you know you run into that but i really respect anything that somebody really has a love and a passion to do when it comes to music you know it it, it sounds good in their head and it makes them feel good doing it so i'm always open to listen to it you know what i mean um so i just i don't know i don't limit myself i mean you know, I think the Justin Bieber thing, like, will never happen for me, ever. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I remember, like, when Justin Timberlake was big, and I, like, gave the dude a chance, and, you know, I may not really care for that kind of stuff, but, you know, you can't deny talent when you hear somebody who's talented. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so, so I just, like I said, I mean, at every show we play on the road, I stand in front and watch every single, like, local band that opens the show, you know, from front to back. I disappear for 30 minutes to warm up, but otherwise, like, uh, every single day on tour, I listen to every single band. And, you know, you run across a lot of amazing people and music that way. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I've, I'm amazed at how much amazing music that I've, that I've found just by doing interviews with people. People throw out names of bands that I've never heard of, and I go look them up after the interview, and I'm like, oh, my God, how did I not know about these guys? So I know, that's so crazy, man. It's just crazy. You think of the... The talent you think of the the small amount of available music to us, you know what I mean? Because it really your library starts, you know, like really not seeming that big anymore, right? And you know, it's just like the amount of amazing musicians out there that no one will ever, unfortunately, hear is like kind of depressing, you know. Well, and that's why I love being a DJ at Metalhead Radio because I get so much stuff that, just like you said, if it wasn't for being a DJ, I would never hear ever in my life. Yeah, well, it's, uh, you you have such a horrible job, and I feel really bad for you. <laughs> like, we were at ESPN yesterday, man, we're, like, walking through there doing a little tour thing, and, yeah, you, know, you see all these these people in there, like, nobody looks depressed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, everybody just looked like you could not rain on their parade, you know what I mean? If so, they would just hold a cup out and drink the water. Um, yeah, I really feel bad for your job. It must really suck. Okay, well, let, let, let's clear the air on something, though. Those people are getting paid for what they do. Ha <laughs> uh, yeah, touche, right? Yeah, that's uh, somebody that said something there. And they're like, you know, you, you know, I was just like, yeah, your job must suck so bad. And he's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, at least I get paid for it. He's like, well, you get paid to do what you do. And, like, the whole band looked at each other, and we hurt ourselves just laughing. Right, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, we're like, man, we don't do this for the money, or you would never hear a band play. Yeah, you know, they get paid. You know, you get paid when you're packing out at arenas, but, bro, you, you're not getting anything until you get to that point, you know? Um, we simply do it because we love it. We love to do it. We love the interaction. And um, we don't mind living like pirates, you know, for small periods of time, you know? Exactly, and that's, that's why I do what I do, just because... For me, it's a love of music. I love to, to come across new bands. And this year, I've, you know, up until this year, I never even interviewed bands. And then I started interviewing bands, and I tell you what, I'm like, I'm addicted. I, wow. I, I love getting to talk to bands. And just, and I love getting to replay an interview and let everybody hear about this band. So, what's 
cool too because you get to hear from the horse's mouth. You know, exactly. Bob, I mean, if, if there is a rumor mill that is over exaggerated, it's in music. You know, like oh, this guitar player did this, this singer did this and that. I mean, man, there is just you know the the perception that we get. Um, you know, like our band, we're just a bunch of idiots. You know, and um, you know we pull up to places and hang out with people and. You know, they're just like, wow, I heard this about your band, or we thought that y'all would be this or that. And, you know, it's, it's uh, thank God for guys like you and, and girls like Shauna. And, you know, just thank God for that because who knows what people would think of musicians, you know what I mean? If you guys did not do interviews. Right. Yeah. I actually I talked to a band last week and, and, and they were like, like, you know, everybody has this, you know, they think of rock stars and they think of all this wild, crazy part. And they're like, we don't have time to do the wild, cra-. and I'm not saying that they don't, but, you know, their point was, we don't have time to party like everybody thinks we do because we have to sleep and rest so we can sing. Dude, I know, like, you hear me right now, like, I'm, like, struggling to talk, you know, it's because we were up so late when we were driving. I don't even drink or anything, so, you know, it's a little different, but, yeah, it's like, you know, you think my wife, you know, like, thought this was just all this glamour oh my gosh you know i'm so jealous like always and then she came out on the road with us like dude you gotta come out on the road you just kind of like see what it's like every day and she was like send me home you know what i mean (laughs) you know she could not wait to go home you know it's like you you uh you know it is fun i mean it is cool you know it's it's like guys night like every single day all day but then that starts to wear off you know and that's why you have to have key people uh in your bus or your van, whatever, um, you know, traveling with you because it can destroy your band immediately. Um, touring is the quickest way for a band to break up, you know. Um, so it's, it's all about the personalities. There has to be the chemistry there. It has to be perfect, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, when people are frustrated, man, when they hear like, oh, my God, this guy left and this guy left and this guy left out of this band. And it's like, man, it's like when you live together, You know what I mean? In a very small, tight quarter, you know, for long periods of time, you know, it's, um, that, that makes or break, you know, like friendships and, and bands and, you know, it's, uh, but luckily we, we have a a good mix and we're good to go on that part. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, yeah, I definitely can understand and see how that could easily go bad really fast. Dude, I mean, you know, some of these guys stink, bro. Uh Uh-huh. I know. (laughs) Yeah, you just gotta like deal with it, but you know it's cool. We have a good time, and we try and put on we try and put a show on that no other band can follow. And we're not saying that you know egotistically. I'm just saying like that's our thing. Like, yeah, we write a record and we put it out, but ultimately, like our job, if you call it, you know, like our goal is to rock your face off when you come watch our band, and uh, make it when you leave that you can't say that we weren't as good as some other band live. You know. It's like, and to do that, you have to have the right guys, and you have to be having a good time and, and fun, and you know, it's like, uh, it's it's definitely a, a dream when you're when you're on stage and you're jamming and you're doing your thing. It's like nothing else compares to it, almost. You know what I mean? Yep. Do you have a favorite song to perform when you're doing a when you're doing a show? Yeah, on our record, Two Arms. It's the song I put out. We put out for the military. That that's absolutely my favorite song to do on the entire record. And, um, you know, closer to have it from the last record, we combined those two back to back. Um, but, you know, we close the show uh, with two arms every single day. It's just, it's just my balls out favorite song to play every day. Speaking of songs, if I was to grab, if I was to look in your, at your MP3 player, your CD player, however you listen to music, what would I find you listening to right now? Uh, right this second, a band called Saturate from Houston, actually. Let me pop this up. Uh, yeah, they're still in there. Saturate. You ever heard of them from Houston? I have not, but I'm going to look them up. See, this is what I'm talking what? about. What's that? This That's... is what I'm talking about, about finding out about bands I've, I don't know. Holy what I can't say on the radio. It's like, it, it literally, they, they didn't intentionally do it. We've known these guys a while. We've played shows with them. And it's like, uh, it is the perfect depiction would be Mud Vein meets Perfect Circle. Okay. That's, look, that's right. Excellent. I look forward to listening to them. Insane band, dude. Insane. I warm up to them actually every day. Very cool. Yeah, but uh, I mean, we could we could sit on the phone for probably seven days going through everything that you know we listen to. I think. Hold on, it's the two discs. We have Perfect Circle and Saturate in here right now. So uh, we just uh, after that, yeah, Deftones. Yeah, so we uh, we we love 
everything. We have like it's weird. We bust up our 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 listening to at a time, and like you know, we'll listen to some metal. We'll listen to some you know uh, some go go dancing. You know, then we'll listen to some you know Jane Fonda workout style stuff. Yeah, we break it all up. <laughs> nice. So, what's your favorite metal band of all time? Um, you know, I don't. Uh, you know. I've been asked this before, and I had somebody go, oh, come on, you know, and I told them just my honest truth is just mega death, and uh, I'm sticking my guns to that. And uh, If I was in the same room with you right now, I would high-five you, because that's my favorite band, too. Yeah, there's just, you know, there's just, you know him, him not, uh, you know, him not being with, you know, Metallica, just, 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 you know, ended up doing the greatest thing for him, and um, that. That can't stay on the radio. It's, it's just amazing, and there's nothing that they've ever done that I think sucked, just like a lot of other bands. But man, just, well, I don't know. It is, is, is one of the things. I mean, yeah, their music's insane, man. But I, I think coupled with his vocals, it's like uh, that, that's just got it. That's just me. I don't know. That's me. Yeah. No, I agree. Their new album's killer too. Yeah, it was. Man, were you not so stoked when you heard they were writing a new record? Every time I hear there's a new Megadeth album coming out, I'm stoked, man. Yeah, but, you know, you have to wait a while sometimes, you know. But, yep. like, the, the fact that they still make records is, you know, it's like... Well, and they're still doing these huge tours. I mean, look at the bands that they're bringing in to do these tours with them. Holy cow. Yeah, I know. I'm going to kick them in the face for not letting us come play with them, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, man, I'm your number one fan, dude. But, uh... It's cool, man. We, uh, you know, my my band. Uh, you know, I don't, it'd be hard to like ask them to probably their favorite metal record. I mean, it's, you know, it's like uh, God. There's, yeah. I mean, it's really hard for me. It's easy to pick, but you know, it's, it's really hard to pick like your favorite anything when it comes to music. No, I, I hear you. You know, I just thought of something we have not done. Can you just go ahead and uh, throw out the names of all all the other guys in the band and what their spots are? Because we haven't covered that yet. Yeah, we have Kelly Hayes. He plays guitar. We have uh, Nathan Grimes. He plays drums. Um, you know, the guy, John, that was on the record moved to New York. He's a chef at a uh, four-star restaurant. He's actually getting ready to be on the show Chops. Oh, wow. So uh, he's doing great. So uh, really, he really hated the fact he had to leave. You know, we recorded the record and jumped in the van and drove to New York, and he's having a good time. Um, and then we have uh, Tim, the baby maker, uh, Tobin on bass. Um, you know, and Alan King's playing guitar with us instead of Lane. Because Lane's not in our band anymore, so. And that's that. Okay. Anything else that you want the world to know about Aleel? Uh, yes, that we love for you to listen to our crap. Um, we spend a lot of time and effort putting it together in hopes that people love it. If you don't like it, give it to someone you think that's going to like it. Uh, just like any band, we, we want to spread our music you know what i mean we want to spread the seed man and uh we really appreciate everybody i mean people from here and all over the, the world in a small amount but we don't really care one or ten million it's the same to us and not in a cliche way in the honest way and we really uh, are humbled and we're so blessed by having a fan base period you know what i mean it's, it's such a huge deal to even have a fan base i think you're lucky nowadays to have a fan base and uh, we're blessed by it. We really appreciate it. We want everybody to know that we love them for it. Very good. Very good. Uh, and I totally agree with your sentiment there because just like when I do my radio show, I don't care if there's one person listening or a or hundred. It, it, I could care less. As long as I have one person listening to me, I'm happy. That's it, man. All it takes is one mouth to ruin it or to, to, to love it. You know exactly. I mean? <laughs> so we appreciate it, though. We'll just hope there's none of those ruiners out there. Yeah, man, we don't want any of them. So far, I think, you know, it sounds like you've been lucky. We've been lucky, so we'll keep it going. Yep. Okay, one last thing to ask. Um, if you could make a couple of radio tags for me, I'd appreciate it a ton. No problem. So if you can make one for my show, that's DJ Rem at metalheadradio.com, and then make one just a, a generic for the radio station that I can send all the DJs. So just another one. It just says metalheadradio.com. And you can just you can just yell, this is Wally from Aleel, however you want to do it. All right, this is Wally from Aleel. You're listening to DJ Rem on Metal Radiohead. 
talk. Is it, what's the website? Metalheadradio.com. All right, yeah, was, you got to forgive me. I'm dyslexic in the morning. It's all good, man. Metalheadradio.com, right? Yep. Yeah, I know that. Hang on a second. Let me close this door because the guys are all sleeping. They're sitting behind me sleeping, saying, Shut up! Are you there? Yep, sure am. All right, ready? Yep, you can go. Everybody, this is Wally from Allele. You are listening to DJ Realm on MetalRadioHead.com. Or I said, <laughs> yeah, I nice. MetalRadio.com. I'm going to put a blooper session together because almost every single time I do this, it gets jacked yeah. up. I'm the first one that's ever said it that way, aren't I? Nah, no, you're not. I know, that's a joke. Oh, sarcasm, huh? Got it. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, how could you say metal radio head? <laughs> if my kids weren't here right now, I would uh, make another comment on that. <laughs> oh, God. Let me hit that button there. All right, sorry, man. You ready? Yep. Hey, this is Wally from the band Allele. You are listening to DJ Realm on Metal Ra- God, <laughs> why is it so hard whenever you're asked to do it? I can just sit there and say, DJ Realm, you're listening to uh, MetalRadio.com. All right, sorry, dude. Metal Head Radio. <laughs> even set it backwards. <laughs> I even set it backwards. Hang on, you know what I'm going to do? Hang on a second. I know that this sounds, this is really pathetic. You're going to write it down, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going to write it down because I apologize, man. Like, uh, you know, I just woke up, so my head's not here. And yeah, it's, it's really sad. Well, the good I, thing is, is re, I'm recording this, so I can, so all your bloopers I can cut out. So, yeah, that's kind of, I, I like that. That's good. Okay. Though, though sometimes I like to leave them in, so you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, you know, you can put them both in there. You know, that's cool. That'd exactly. All right, you ready? Yep. Hey, everybody! This is Wally from the band Allele. You are listening to DJ Realm on MetalheadRadio.com. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. A dunk a dunk. So one more. You're not done yet. Let's do it. Same thing, but don't say DJ Rem. Okay. I was saying things just don't mention you. Right. right yeah. Ready? Yep, go. Hey everybody, this is Wally from the band Allele. You are listening to MetalheadRadio.com. Yeah, yeah. Perfect.